In this video, we'll take a look at the Atari 400 Mini by Retro Games. After spending some time testing this device, there are some things I like and some things that need to be improved. Are those improvement areas important to you? Well, let's find out. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. The company, Retro Games, has released the Atari 400 Mini. What we're looking at here is the retail version of the product. I picked this one up on Amazon, and if you're interested in doing the same, I'll place a link in the description below. While I never personally owned an Atari 400, a good friend back in the day, Chris, had one, and I remember going to his house to check it out. One pretty cool feature is that it emulates not only the Atari 400, but also the 800, XL, XE, and even the 5200. The Mini includes 25 licensed Atari 400 games with the ability to add your own using a USB stick, which we'll check out shortly. Inside the box, we have the CX stick, which is about the same size as the original CX40, but it's very different. The stick actually has eight buttons rather than just the one on the original, these are used to perform various functions such as accessing the menu, activating the on-screen keyboard, rewind a game, and more. The 400 Mini very closely resembles the original console with a familiar membrane keyboard and beige color that is a very close match to the original. On the bottom are four rubber feet to keep it from sliding around, and the power input is 5 volts, 1 amp. Keep in mind there is no USB power adapter in the box. Not a big deal, but something worth noting. At the back you have a USB port, which is ideal for the USB stick for adding your own games, the HDMI output to your TV or monitor, USB-C power input, and a power switch. At the front are four additional USB ports for connecting up to four controllers. The top cover isn't removable, and none of the buttons on the keyboard nor on the right hand side are functional. When it comes to the quick start guide, there are only two pages of information in English. However, if you scan the barcode on the second page, you'll find a link to the full manual, which is 38 pages and goes into much more detail about the 400 Mini. In the box at the bottom, you'll find all the cables you'll need to connect up to your TV, including an HDMI to HDMI cable, as well as a USB Type-A to USB Type-C to power the device. You've likely already noticed, but I'll go ahead and point it out anyway, that both the USB cable and the HDMI cables are a beige color and very closely match the console itself. I think that was a very nice touch. Briefly going back to the CX stick, earlier I didn't highlight this, but there is a single shoulder button on the left, the menu and home button at the back, and four additional buttons around the four positions around the ring, and of course the fire button itself. On the bottom, the CX stick is etched into the plastic and also has four rubber feet. As mentioned, none of the buttons on the keyboard or the side are usable, but they are slightly beveled. We'll go ahead and plug in the power and the HDMI cable. For size comparison, the 400 Mini is very small and the joystick is about half as large as the console itself. Anyways, that's enough talking about it. Let's power it up and see how it functions. Plugging in the joystick is also a good idea. Now I'll transition to the video capture device so you can get a better look. On the first power up, you'll select your language. The small F at the bottom represents the fire button to proceed. Then select the refresh rate, 50 Hz outside of North America and 60 Hz inside. We'll then see a list of all 25 games Feel free to pause the video if you want to read some of the game descriptions. First off, we have Airball, Asteroids, Basketball, Battlezone, which is a great arcade game, Berserk, another classic, Boulder Dash, Bristles, Capture the Flag, Centipede, Crystal Castles, Electric Glide, Encounter, Flip and Flop, Henry's House, 
Hover Bover Lee, I guess like Bruce Lee, Mule, Millipede, another fun arcade game, Minor 2049er, Missile Command, O'Reilly's Mine, Seven Cities of Gold, Star Raiders 2, hmm. Wavy Navy, and yo, there it is. <laughs> Let's take a brief look at some of the settings and options. If you press the menu button on the back of the CX stick, you'll find some additional options. Under display options, you can change the aspect ratio from 4.3 to pixel perfect. I prefer 4.3, so I'll go ahead and leave it there. You can enable the CRT effect, which will provide scan lines to look closer to the scan lines from a CRT monitor. Under Choose Frame, there are about 13 different frames that you can select from. This is the border that will appear around the games as you're playing. In the following gameplay, I'll just leave it as a black border. Under Language, you can change the language if needed. Then in Advanced Options, in System Options, you can adjust the background music volume while in the menus. In System Information, you can see the firmware build information. Shutdown device will safely shut down the 400 Mini. Legal notices will show the legal stuff. Factory reset will restore the Mini back to the way it was when you received it. Then just press the top ring button to close out of the menu. If you press up on the joystick, you'll see a reference of how the buttons are mapped for each game. Pressing down will show the game saves. There are four slots for each game. To save the game state, press the home button at the back while in a game, then select the slot and press the fire button. To restore a save state, just select the state and the game will be reloaded right back where you left off. Pressing the right ring will allow you to sort games by author, genre, year, publisher, favorites, or title. You can also rate each game by pressing the left ring button which may be handy if you want to sort by those you like best, or your favorites. Now we'll take a brief look at some of the gameplay of the included games. Airball is an interesting isometric puzzle game. It's one I don't recall ever playing, but was interesting to try out. Asteroids was an okay port. I actually prefer the Atari 2600 version over this one, but it was still fun. Basketball is a very simple one-on-one -on -one game. It looks better than some early basketball games and was fun to try out. This port of Battlezone was from the arcades and is relatively fun to play and looks pretty good. I love Berserk and this port has the advantage of audio callouts. The gameplay will freeze briefly during those callouts but it's impressive that it even has them. Boulder Dash is a classic puzzle game there are 16 puzzles to complete, and it is a fun and challenging game. Bristles is a platformer where you must paint all the walls in the house before the time runs out. I've not played this game before, but I enjoyed it. Capture the Flag is a 3D maze game. Back in the day, I'm sure the graphics were pretty impressive at that time, but I didn't find this game very much fun. This is an okay port of Centipede. Slightly improved over the Atari 2600 graphics, but not by much. Crystal Castles is fun. I had a difficult time with the controller on this game. It didn't always seem to move in the direction I was pressing. Electric Glide is a motorcycle racing game. There are bouncing balls and other obstacles trying to knock you off the bike. Encounter is an interesting game. It's kind of like a 3D pinball game in a way, but you have to take out alien invaders. I really had a hard time navigating with flip and flop. After initially realizing only certain areas will allow moving from one platform to another, I still found the joystick moving in unintended directions. Henry's House is a platformer game where you must navigate the house to find the key to escape to the next room. Hover Bover is a lawnmower maze game. It's interesting and something you may enjoy. Lee is a, another platformer game where you can kick, duck, run, and fight various enemies. There are 20 hidden rooms, and this was okay. 
Many will remember Mule. It's a classic turn-based strategy game where you colonize a planet. Millipede is a port of the arcade version, and a decent one at that. I spent a lot of time playing this game and enjoyed it. Miner 2049er is a platformer where you control Bounty Bob and explore all ten levels of an abandoned mine filled with odd mutants. Missile Command is a good port of the arcade game. I likely spent the most time playing this one and found it to be fun and challenging. With O'Reilly's Mines, you are a miner that must find all the buried treasure while avoiding the river flowing through it. Use dynamite to slow the enemies. Seven Cities of Gold is a strategy slash exploration game where you negotiate and trade with different tribes. Map the landscape and earn gold for the Spanish Empire. Star Raiders 2 is the sequel to the original Star Raiders. It's a fun shoot 'em up game. Wavy Navy is very similar to Space Invaders, but a bit different. At the bottom are waves that have mines and can take out your ship. I really enjoyed this game. Yoop is a rhythm-based platformer. You have to guide the bouncing ball to the beat through various platforms. This game is very difficult, but a lot of fun, and the graphics look pretty impressive. During my gameplay testing, I noticed several times across mostly the isometric games that the stick wasn't moving in the direction I was pressing. This became a bit of a concern. Since the CX stick is a USB controller, I connected it to my Windows 11 PC and opened up Game Controller Setup. I located the CX stick and went into Properties. Now I'm going to enlarge the properties so you can see what's happening a little better. On my stick, if I press directly in a given position, at times you'll see the small cursor move to a different position than the one I'm moving the stick. I repeated this test several times and it seems like it's happening more often when more pressure is given to a certain area, but not always. Sometimes I just have to barely move it and it registers in two different positions. Games like Airball, Crystal Castles, and Flip and Flop were particularly noticeable to register incorrectly. I wanted to make you aware there are issues with this controller that may or may not be possible to fix with a firmware update. Now we'll check out some additional features of the Atari 400 Mini. You can expand your game library by adding games to a FAT32 formatted USB stick. We'll talk more about that in a moment, but once plugged in, you'll notice a new tile for media access. We'll first take a brief look at basic programming. For this, you'll want to connect a USB keyboard into an available port on the front of the console. Going back to the media access tile, we'll start it, and you'll see folders that you may have created. I went ahead and created five here for testing. However, on the far right, you'll see the 400 basic. Select that, then press the home button to enter basic. The basic interpreter will then load, and I'll type in a short program to keep adding one to X and display the value using the print command. Type run to start the program. To stop the program, you can press F8 on the keyboard. If I type list and press enter, I can again see my program. If you don't have a keyboard available, you could also press the menu plus home to pop up a virtual keyboard and type it in that way. Just press menu and home again to close it. I can also type save, quotation mark, d colon, john.bas, or whatever file name you want to use, and save the program. If I type DOS, DOS, and press enter, we'll enter the Atari Disk Operating System. From here, I'll press A to perform a directory listing, then enter, and we can see the john.bas file that we just saved. Now I'll press B and enter to return back to basic. If I type list, our program is no longer in memory, but we can reload it by typing load quotation mark d colon john dot bas end quote. If I type list, we'll see the program again. Now we'll type run to run it and F8 to exit the loop. 
So yeah, you can do some basic programming on the 400 Mini, and it's pretty fun. Now let's talk about how you can add your own games to the Atari 400 Mini. Here I have a USB stick where I copied a handful of Atari 800 games as well as Atari 5200. I'll leave a link to the full Atari 400 Mini manual below that goes into much more detail about this. There are certain file types that are supported. Here's a quick look at what those are. Essentially, you'll copy the files in a folder that you create for each system on your USB stick. From there, browse to the game you want to play and select it. Then press the menu button to make sure the correct Atari model is selected. Enable or disable BASIC if it's needed to run the program. And in some cases, you may also need to adjust the display width, height, or offset. I'd leave the control mapping as is. However, if you want to change it, you can go into map controls at the right and make whatever mapping changes that you prefer. Once done, go back to the game, press the home button to start the game. We'll give one of my favorite games from back in the day a try, and that's Galaxian. The game played fine during my testing, as did Pitfall. I didn't test a large number of Atari 800 games, but of the ones you saw here, they all played fine. I should also note that if you press the home button while in a game, and then down on the joystick, you can also save the game state for any games you add yourself. That is, you'll have four slots available for each game, just like those that are built into the console. When it came to using third-party controllers, I tried two different ones, neither of which were official controllers. One was an Xbox 360 clone controller, the other an NES-style controller. While the control mapping diagram recognized the buttons during setup, while in-game, neither controller worked for me. Your mileage may vary when it comes to using a controller other than the CX stick. While testing the Atari 5200 emulator, well, it was a mixed bag. Keep in mind the issues I encountered likely have to do with the analog to digital conversion. Some games sort of work uh, from the same ROM set, while others were an absolute mess. For example, Mario Brothers worked okay but it did feel a bit laggy. Star Wars also played okay, but the controls were hypersensitive. Further adjustments in the settings may assist with that. When it came to Pac-Man, I found the experience unimpressive and unplayable. I was using the same settings as the other two games, attempted various adjustments, and even if my adjustments were off just a little bit, it shouldn't have played this poorly. Here you'll see where I'm clearly moving the stick up or down, and Pac-Man is just not having it. I think Atari 5200 games are going to be a mixed bag on this device, and likely has to do with the analog to digital conversion within the emulators. Some may be okay, others just aren't going to be playable. Dig Dug was equally frustrating. Hopefully these issues can be patched in a future firmware update, I think it's possible that improvements can be made that will allow more 5200 games to perform better, but we'll just have to wait and see. That brings us to the end of another video. I like the aesthetics of the Atari 400 Mini. Retro Games did a great job with the mold of the device. The user interface looks very nice and is easy to use. There are a number of classic games that many are going to enjoy as well. I also like the ability to be able to use the 400 Mini for basic programming. It might be a great way to introduce youngsters to the early days of computing. For areas that can be improved, the fact that the CX stick is registering incorrect movements as we saw earlier, I think that is a big issue. The sticks are fairly stiff and there is no way that you can consistently gauge when the controller is going to misreport the movement. For some games, it may be less of an issue, but certainly, in isometric games, it will be very noticeable and frustrating. 
I do appreciate the ingenuity of having buttons along the ring. Although during gameplay, I frequently hit the ring buttons trying to figure out the right way to hold the stick. This happened several times during my testing, and I would prefer those buttons to reside on the console itself. As mentioned, the Atari 5200 emulation is going to be hit and miss, mostly miss. Granted, the 5200 didn't have the best controls to begin with. What do you think of the Atari 400 Mini? Let me know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please let me know by clicking the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel and like what you found here, I hope you'll consider doing so. And with that, I look forward to talking with you again very soon.